If Google Ads is not generating the extra sales and leads that you need for your business every single day, then you're using the wrong strategy. So if you're not getting any conversions in Google Ads, the problem is not Google Ads. The problem is that your strategy that you're using in Google Ads is a big steaming pile of you know what. And the reason for why I know that the problem is not Google Ads, but the problem is the strategy that you are using is because I've created successful Google Ads campaigns in pretty much any business niche you could think of with small budgets and larger budgets. So if you wanna learn the best strategies that are working in Google Ads, I want you to stick around and watch this video because in this video, I'm gonna be sharing with you the top four strategies that are working in Google Ads right now. If we haven't met yet, my name is Aaron Young and I'm your 15,000 hour Google Ads master. And this is where I share all of my successful Google Ads strategies that I've been testing since 2010. So if you wanna find out how to use Google Ads the right way, why don't you give me a quick subscribe right now? Thank you very much. So let's get straight into those top four strategies that are working in Google Ads right now. And the first one is, is that you need to be creating your own audiences in Google Ads. And the reason for why it's so important to create your own audiences and why this strategy works so well is because by creating your own audiences in Google Ads allows you to remarket and retarget specific audiences with highly targeted specific messages. Now the easiest audience to create is a remarketing audience and this is one that most people would be aware of in that you're remarketing and retargeting people who have recently visited your website. So for example, if someone comes and visits on your website today, you can then remarket and retarget them with different shopping, display, or performance max ads. But what I wanna talk about here is creating highly specific custom audiences who have visited different parts of your website or taken on different actions to your website so that you can come back and target them with tailored campaigns and tailored messages. So let's just say you're running an e-commerce store. You can actually create a custom audience in your Google Ads profile that contains people who have gone to your website, visited a product page, and then even added an individual product to their cart, but haven't yet finished that sale online. And then once you have that audience running, it means that you can come back and target that audience with specific messages, reminding them to finish their product sale on your website. Or if you're running a service-based campaign or a holiday accommodation campaign, you can create an audience in Google Ads of people who have gone to your website, but also visited an individual service or accommodation type page. And then once you have that audience active and live in Google Ads, you can then come back and create an individual campaign or ad group messaging, which specifically urges them and reminds them to complete their booking with you today. And although this might sound complicated to set up, it's actually quite an easy process and you can do it all within the audience manager section within Google Ads. So let's go into a screen share so that I can show you how to set up your very own custom audiences in Google Ads. So in this example, I'm gonna show you how you can set up a custom audience in Google Ads. And what we're gonna be targeting is we're gonna be targeting people who have gone to this accommodation website and also visited some of these individual accommodation pages. And this same process can be replicated for your own website because what you're looking at doing is we're just looking to create an audience using individual URLs. So what you first need to do is you need to go into your Google Ads profile, then go into Tools and Settings, and then go into your Audience Manager tab. And then from there, just go and press this big blue plus button and we wanna go plus website visitors. Now with your audience segment name, I recommend naming it something that makes sense to you. And because in this case, we're targeting it for people who have visited an individual accommodation page, I'm just gonna write accommodation page visitors. But if you've got a service-based company or a product-based website, you could change this segment name to either service page or product page visitors. And then it's just a process of going through and creating the conditions for your different audience. And you can see in Google Ads, they've got five different options. So visitors of a page, visitors of a page who have also visited another page, and then visitors of a page who did not visit another page. And then if you wanted to, you could also add in modifiers around specific dates or specific tags that you have on your different website pages. But for us, as we're looking at people who have gone into our main page and then one of the individual accommodation pages, we're gonna be selecting visitors of a page who also visited another page. And then from there, you can see you've got this option for your page URL, and then you can either have it filtered by contains, equals, starts with or ends with, and then also the negative options of does not contain or does not equal. But for us, we're just gonna use the example equals. We then go over to our website and select that URL, press paste, and then we also wanna filter it by people who have gone and visited a second page. And for us, it's this one bedroom villa Seminyak page. So we just go through and copy this URL. And for this one, we can keep it as contains. 
And the reason why I've put it for contains in this option is because this page does have some other URLs which also include that one bedroom Villa Seminyak which we wanna also target. And then we actually come down to these final options where you can actually pre-fill and this pre-fill segment is limited to 30 days. And what this does mean is that your audience will actually start with people who have gone to these two pages within the last 30 days. And then for your membership duration, this talks about how long do you actually want people to stay in this audience for. And as you can see here, you can keep this membership duration for up to 540 days or around 18 months. But in this case, I want this audience to be valid for around about six months. So I'm gonna write 180 days. And then from there, if you wanted to put some extra explaining details, this is only gonna be internal. Just so you know what this audience is about, you can write this in here. And then from there, we press create segment. And now when you come into your audience manager section, you can already see that this new audience is already populating, which does take up to 72 hours to complete this population process. The one thing I do wanna point out is that for an audience to actually work, it does need to have a size of about a thousand users. And that's how simple it is to create your very own audience in Google Ads. And as I said, using that process, you can create your own custom audiences depending on the type of users that you wanna to retarget to in the future on your website. So you can have that audience filtered by different actions that need to be completed on your website depending on the type of audience that you wanna create. And in the comments section, why don't you let me know the custom audience that you're gonna create in your own Google Ads campaign. So let's now move on to that second strategy that we wanna talk about. And the second strategy is always, and I mean always, segment your campaign into individual keyword or product group themes. So if you're running a Google Ads search campaign, you need all of your keywords using that one keyword theme where you've got individual ad groups targeting individual keyword themes. Or if you're running a shopping or a performance max campaign, you want your campaign broken into different segments that are targeting individual product categories or individual types of products. Now this strategy is so simple, but the reason for why it's so powerful is because it allows you to very, very quickly pause or stop any extra spending on keyword themes or product groupings which are costing you money but not generating any conversions or revenue. And by pausing those underperforming keyword themes or product groups, it has the added benefit of allowing for more budget to be spent and more budget to be focused on those profitable keyword themes and those profitable products which are bringing in more sales and conversions for your business. So the correct segmentation for your search campaigns would look something like this, where you have your individual campaigns, and then below that you have individual ad groups which are targeting those individual keyword themes, which then go into those keywords, and then those specific ad texts and landing pages which relate to those individual keywords and keyword themes. Or if you're running a shopping campaign, you would have campaigns with those individual product groups, with those individual products under each product group, and then with those individual product searches going to the relative product page. So by using that structure to segment your campaign into individual product groupings and also individual keyword themes allows you to not only see which parts of your campaign are being successful, but it also allows you to very quickly pause those underperforming parts of your campaign, which is just wasting your budget without bringing in any extra sales or conversions. And that now brings us to our third strategy, which is all about using the correct budget structure. Now, this is a strategy that most people don't even think of, but it makes a massive difference to the total success of your campaign. And that's because in your campaign, it is highly likely that you will have products or keywords that will have a really high volume, and then you will have other products or keywords which won't have as many searches, but because they're longer tail search inquiries or niche products, they will have a higher conversion rate. But for a successful Google Ads campaign, you need to make sure that you're targeting both of these searches, so that you're targeting those high volume searches, but then you're also targeting those longer tail or more specific searches which have a lower volume but a higher conversion rate. And the problem is, is that although those longer tail search terms have a really high conversion rate, it's highly likely that because they've got a very low number of searches, they won't be generating enough conversions and sales for your total campaign to be successful. But if you just keep them all grouped together with your high volume keywords and product searches, it means that those high volume keywords and product searches will be taking all of your budget, not allowing any leftover budget, for your ads to trigger for those low volume but high converting keywords. So this is why you need to separate those high volume keywords so that they're operating in a different campaign to those longer tail but higher converting keywords. Because you actually set your budgets at your campaign level. 
So even if you were to put those high volume and low volume search terms into separate ad groups, if they're sitting in the same campaign, it's not gonna make any difference because those ad groups with the high volume will be taking all of your daily budget. So by separating out those longer tail, more niche keywords into a separate campaign with its own budget, you're making sure that you're allowing for enough budget to be spent on those high converting keywords. Now this strategy is a little bit more complex but is so important and because it is so important, I've actually created another video which is solely dedicated to this strategy. And if you stick around to the end of this teaching, I will show you how you can go through and watch that video so that you can get the correct budget structure for your campaigns in Google Ads. And now we come to the fourth and final strategy that I wanna share with you today for your Google Ads campaign. And that is for success in Google Ads, you need to make sure that with your ads, you are split testing, split testing, and split testing again. In your Google Ads campaign, you should be running ad copy split tests each and every single month, even with responsive search ads. Now, some people have the wrong belief that because Google Ads is about to change over to the responsive search ads, where you can no longer upload or edit expanded text ads, some people foolishly believe that split testing in Google Ads is dead. However, even right now with responsive search ads, split testing is one of the most effective strategies that you can use in your Google Ads campaign to ensure that you're gonna be seeing month on month increases to your click through ratios and your conversion rates. And right now I wanna go into a screen share to show you how you can complete your split testing for responsive search ads and what you need to be looking for. So here is a current split test that I'm doing with two individual responsive search ads. Now this is at the end of a split testing phase which I've just completed over the last 30 days. And you can actually see that from the results of the split test, and we've got one clear winner, which has a much higher conversion rate and a better performing cost per conversion. Now when we do look at this interaction rate or this click-through ratio, you can both see that they'll both fairly similar. So what this is letting me know here with this second responsive search ad, the issue was not getting people to click on the ad, but the issue was getting them to convert on that ad. Now the main split test which I was running here is I was running to see what the difference was with using keyword insertion and also some pinned headlines. So you can see with this responsive search ad, which had the lower conversion rates, you can see through here that I didn't have any headlines pinned in. We did have a couple of keyword insertions that we were testing, but the main difference here was that we had none of those pinned in headlines. But with this other ad which had the high conversion rate and it was a significant difference with the 6% conversion rate difference and it was also providing conversions at $7 less per conversion. You can see here the big difference was is that we made sure that all of these keyword insertions were pinned to only show in the first position. So you can see with all the different options, regardless of which ad was shown, we always made sure that that first headline had that really strong keyword focus. So now that I know with this split test, it's told me that pinning in that keyword focus headline works really well for this business. So now I can move into some other split tests over the coming months. Now to complete that, you've actually got two options. One, when you're actually in the ad group level, you can just quickly go through and press this new create ad, and then you've got the option of that responsive search ad. Or the other option is you can actually select this little ad here, press edit, copy, and then from there you can go through and paste it into this same ad group. And then what you need to do when you see this box, you just need to say yes, that if the ad already exists, create a duplicate, and then once this ad appears in your ad group, you can then edit the ad to carry out some different split tests before you go through and pause that underperforming ad. So the final strategy that you need to know for your Google Ads is to make sure that you're carrying out split tests of your ad copies every single month. And to make sure that you don't forget that important step along with all of the other optimizations you need to be completing in your Google Ads campaign, I wanna give you my free Google Ads optimization checklist. And this is a checklist which lists every single optimization action which you need to be completing in your Google Ads campaign. But more than that, it not only tells you what you need to complete, it lets you know exactly when you need to be completing each of those optimization actions, whether that would be every 72 hours, every week, every month, or every 90 days. And to get your copy, I just want you to follow the link in the description below. Now finally, remember when we're talking about that third very important strategy that you need to be using in your Google Ads campaign, which is all about making sure you're using the correct budget structure. So if you wanna learn more about how to use the correct budget structure in your campaign to make sure that you're targeting not only those high volume, but also those longer tail, lower volume keywords, which have those higher conversion rates, I want you to go through and watch this video right here. Once again, thank you for joining on in this teaching and I look forward to seeing you over in that budget structure video right now.